chest tube removal usually whoever actively managing this chest tube should be the one who decide to remove it and the one who's performing this removal so this is the first rule who's actively managing not necessarily the person who placed it but mostly most of the time the person who placed it is the one who's actively managing it so that's rule of thumb we should not decide if i'm a resident or even a hospitalist should not decide on my own it's time to remove the chest tube so that's the first thing the second thing it depends removal depends what we're treating are we treating pneumothorax let me call it ptx or plural effusion or empyema or hemothorax etc based on the indication we decide how soon on when or when do we remove it for pneumothorax usually we say the lung has to be fully expanded that's very important and another very important one is no air leak zero air leak so how do we tell of course when you have the chest tube we talked about the air leak in our previous videos if there's no bubble no air leak the chest x-ray showed fully expanded lung the patient is hemodynamically stable then there is one extra step some say okay we need to make sure there is no intermittent air leak uh, and all of this should be without suction suction should be removed very important now some people some people will leave the chest tube in place under water seal just to water seal suction and leave it for a day and recheck next morning make sure everything okay then pull chest tube some clamp chest tube and clamping chest tube with pneumothorax you have to be really careful you have to make sure there is no air leak at any point you see any change in the hemodynamics of the patient please declamp the chest tube immediately but th let's say you clamp the chest tube for a few hours or for a whole day next morning the lungs still fully expanded patient hemodynamically stable then you, you know and the chest x-ray showing full expanded lung then go ahead and remove the chest tube Plural effusion depends on daily output. Usually, it really depends if daily output less than 300 cc, and some they want it less than 150, some I've seen less than 100. So, really, can be individualized to the patient and based on the uh, person who's managing the chest tube. Empyema is similar to plural effusion, although with empyema, you have to look at the leukocytosis fever and the, the other signs that infection is improving although some small pockets of pus may stay but those can resolve on their own hemothorax again depends on the output a uh, post operatively after cabbage after the thoracic surgeries also this depends on the output and the other fact if there is air leak after thoracic surgery, if there's pneumothorax, all of these. One important thing to understand, in, in positive pressure ventilation, usually we prefer to leave chest tube until the patient is off this, whether patient mechanically and uh, uh, mechanical ventilation intubated until he's extubated, all on, let's say, BiPAP until he's off or she's off BiPAP, then at that point, if the patient meet the criteria we extubate, uh, take chest tube out if the patient has these criteria while they still on make positive pressure ventilation leave the chest tube the safest thing is to leave the chest tube until the patient is off positive pressure ventilation is very important now whether to remove it at the end of expiration or end of expiration it doesn't matter again usually who's actively managing it who is the one who decide when to remove it and actually who's the one who remove chest tube last thing is you need to closely monitor the patient after the chest tube removal at least for the next 24 hours to make sure he's hemodynamically stable 
there is no recurrence of the fusion, the hemothorax, the, uh, the pneumothorax, there is no tension pneumothorax developing. Uh, that's very important. The last advice I have for you, remember, chest tubes usually managed by the person who put it in or whoever will take over and actively managing that, right? Should be removed by the person who's actively managing that. We should not interfere with that or play the chest tube unless we working with the person who actively managing that and we they are concurring with our plan or they are guiding us to do this. Remember, do not clamp chest tubes unless you are guided to never clamp chest tube with an air leak or suspected air leak. These are very important advices when we are managing chest tube. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.